Now one evening after a lecture in New York, a man approached me about becoming my patient. He was rotund and he had a round and ruddy face, a booming voice and a gentle manner. Everything about him was large, his appetites, his belly, and even his heart. Samuel was nearly 60 years old and his love of everything big was waning as he felt the encroachment of death. He described years of feeding his fat, drinking a pint of heavy whipping cream every night before bed just to keep his weight up. Now in the end, the big presence that Samuel's 300 pound corpus gave him was not worth the infirmities he suffered. Now he was diabetic, his insulin was over 200 and his blood sugar was high and normal insulin is less than 20. He had very high cholesterol levels, he had angina or chest pain, sleep apnea, high blood pressure, a thyroid that wasn't working, he was always exhausted, he even had reflux, he was short of breath at nearly every step, his nose was congested, his legs were swollen, his skin was dry, and yeast grew all over his body. Now, Samuel may sound like a hopeless case, but the truth is that everything Samuel had done to his body, he had done to himself and he could undo. I told him that if he did everything I suggested, he would lose weight, feel better, and all of his symptoms would go away. Enthusiastic, though somewhat skeptical, he left my office very determined, and three months later I spoke to him on the phone. He lost 30 pounds, he had more energy, his nasal congestion was gone, his fluid-filled swollen legs were better, all of his cravings were gone, and he never felt hungry, and he found the program easy to follow. 14 months later, I saw him again and repeated his blood test, and I was shocked when he weighed in. He had lost 110 pounds without being on a strict deprivation diet. He simply changed his eating and his lifestyle. His diabetes was cured. His blood sugar dropped from 130 to 74, which is normal. His HDL or good cholesterol and LDL cholesterol and triglycerides were normal without any medication anymore. He was exercising vigorously three or four times a week. After a lifetime of uncontrollable appetites, Samuel finally found balance and health without suffering and continued to take pleasure in his food and Samuel felt and looked 20 years younger. Now I know Samuel's story is an extreme one, and you may or may not be suffering from the problems as severe as those he faced, but even so, I'm sure that you could relate to what some of Samuel experienced. Do you worry about your health? Do you have joint pain? Do you feel tired all the time? Are you overweight? Do you suffer from diabetes or high blood pressure? Do you have to check your blood sugar all the time because it's up and down? Do you have high cholesterol and high triglycerides? If you answer yes to any of these questions, you probably feel 20 years older than you are, and deep down, you may even be terrified by the possibility of complications in your health like heart disease, nerve damage, blindness, and kidney failure, and even amputation. You just want to live a normal life and get back some of your energy and vitality. You want to turn back the clock and reverse your diabetes, and you can do that. I know most people are skeptical when a doctor tells them they can reverse diabetes, but over the course of this video, I'm going to prove it to you. You can have the same experience Samuel did, and you don't have to suffer or starve to make that happen. You simply have to follow this program. I'm going to tell you how the program works in just a moment, but first I want to explain what I mean by the term diabetes. And I'm going to tell you why the condition you've just been diagnosed with isn't exactly the problem you've had. If you're watching this video, you're likely one among millions of people who are suffering from a health problem that is now epidemic in our country and the world. Your doctor might have diagnosed you with one of the seemingly many different diseases. He may have said you have insulin resistance or pre-diabetes or metabolic syndrome or obesity or syndrome X or adult onset diabetes or type 2 diabetes. What he likely didn't tell you is that all of these conditions are basically the same thing just with varying degrees of severity. That's right, the underlying causes of all the conditions I just mentioned are the same. And because they're all the same condition, the treatment for all of them is also the same. That is why in this video, I'm setting aside these conventional diagnoses in a place of a new name that more accurately describes the problems you suffer from. That term is diabesity. It was first coined by Shape Up America, former Surgeon General C. Everett Koop's foundation. Diabetes is a condition of metabolic imbalance and disease that ranges all the way from mild blood sugar imbalances to full-blown diabetes. Whether you're suffering from a little extra weight around the middle, or you've been diagnosed with insulin resistance or even type 2 diabetes, the fundamental underlying biological causes of all these conditions 
are the same. Diabetes in its various forms affects over 1 billion people worldwide. This is a massive global problem and our current approach to the prevention and treatment is obviously not working because millions more are affected every year in a dramatic increase of a condition that was once very rare. Diabetes is also the leading cause of most chronic disease in the 21st century. Those with diabetes are at an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, dementia, cancer, high blood pressure, blindness, and kidney failure. Nervous system damage affects 60 to 70 percent of people with diabetes and can lead to a loss of sensation in the hands and feet, slow digestion of food in the stomach, carpal tunnel syndrome, sexual dysfunction, and more. So this is a very real and very serious problem for those who suffer from diabetes. Given all this, one would think that the question on everybody's mind would be, why is this happening? What has caused this diabetes epidemic? Why are our current approaches to treating the problem failing so miserably? What new approaches could we take that would more effectively treat the problem? Few in medicine today are asking these questions, yet their answers are disarmingly simple. The reason our current approach to treating diabetes fails is because it focuses on treating the symptoms or risk factors of the disease rather than the causes. All of our attention is on treatments that lower blood sugar, like diabetes drugs and insulin, or lower blood pressure, like antihypertensive drugs, or drugs that improve cholesterol, like statins, or thin the blood, like aspirin. But we never ask the most important question. Why is your blood sugar, blood pressure, or blood cholesterol too high in the first place? And why is your blood too sticky and more likely to clot and cause strokes and heart attacks? Put another way, what are the root causes of diabetes? Answering this question must be the focus of our diagnosis and treatment of this disease if we're going to solve this global epidemic. In truth, diabetes and elevated blood sugar and elevated blood pressure and cholesterol are simply downstream symptoms that result from other problems, problems with our diet, our lifestyle, and environmental toxins. These are the real causes of diabetes. Unfortunately, few are taking the time to treat them. Now, using medication or surgery to treat symptoms like imbalanced blood sugar, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and the other complications of diabetes is like mopping up the floor while the sink overflows. In medicine today, we have a choice. We can continue to mop up this overflow, or we can deal with the source of the problem and turn off the faucet that's treating the root causes of the problems that are causing your illness. I'm going to show you how to turn off the faucet in this program so you can heal from diabetes and achieve optimal health. The truth is that our current approach to treating diabetes is outdated and ineffective. And in the next segment, I'm going to tell you why.